Guy Reschenthaler, congressman, fresh off a afternoon meal with his BFF Nancy Pelosi joining us now. Guy, how you doing today? <laughs> good, good one, Daddy. How are you doing? <laughs> doing wonderful. How is Nancy these days? Oh, she is as uh, vicious as ever. Uh, she rules that. <laughs> she she rules that Democrat Party with an iron fist. I mean, it's truly amazing to see. Uh, in the other, the Democrat chair people are terrified of her. It, it's quite amazing. Kevin McCarthy wishes he only he, he could have just a tenth of the power Nancy Pelosi has over those members because she's uh, she can really run a tight ship over there. Hey, I'll tell you what, the stuff you're witnessing in D.C. right now, let's start with the absolute bullying, uh, name-calling, and and just viciousness directed at the Supreme Court right now by the two other branches of government. I thought it was supposed to be separate but equal. Yeah, you know what? It's amazing that we hear from the last that Republicans and President Trump were a threat to democracy, that we have no respect for institutions. Yet they're the ones that want to pack the Supreme Court, that are running around calling the Supreme Court illegitimate. Uh, they're the ones that ran over to the Supreme Court and started and started a protest the day the Roe decision came out or the God's decision came out. So it, it's quite amazing, the hypocrisy. You know, I often say if it weren't for a double standard, the Democrats would have no standard at all. And, and they're the ones that say that they, you know, Trump bullied everybody, Trump demeaned everybody. And believe me, he, I mean, he, he he had his moments, but they're doing exactly what they accused him of times 10. Right. And the Democrats have been like this for at least 20 years. Remember when George, when George W. Bush was in the White House, the attacks on Bush and Cheney were ruthless. Uh, they were relentless. Uh, and then, then you had Barack Obama and the Republicans did not fight Barack Obama nearly as hard. Then you had President Trump who came, and he was not the John McCain type. He was not the Mitt Romney type. He was the guy that was fighting back for, uh, against the left and all of their craziness. And that's why Trump got so much support. He changed politics, but Trump didn't bring the nastiness into the political arena. It was already there that was brought by the Democrats. It, and by the way, the vitriol that the left has for the conservative justices on the Supreme Court, for President Trump, for Republican elected officials, that is really aimed at you, uh, the general public. They have a disdain for uh, uh, average Americans. It's just that President Trump, the Supreme Court, you know, elected officials that are Republicans, we are just in between the Democrats and the, the, the Democrats and the media and Average citizen. Talking to Republican Congressman Guy Reschenthaler right now. I've seen reports, and these are supposed to be coming from Democratic insiders, saying that the Democratic Party does not want Biden to run for re-election, that they actually think he's been too passive on stuff, that he's embarrassing. What are you, what are you hearing there in D.C. inside the Beltway as far as the Democrats' next move? They, so they do not want him to run. It, the, when I talk to people in the hall from the other side of the aisle, it is very clear off the record. It, you know, they it, they'll talk to you and they'll say they they do not like the direction that that he is taking the party. The the problem is though is that Biden looks like a feeble, weak leader, but his agenda is exactly what the Democrats want. So so it's weird, but they know that Biden will get destroyed by a Republican candidate, whether that's Trump, DeSantis, Noam, who knows. So they want to they want to change him out. If I were to if I were to bet, I would say the Democrats try to run Pete Buttigieg because he's very tight with Obama. Uh, it would be a juxtaposition of the old doddering fool with the young whiz kid coming in. Now I'm not a Buttigieg fan, anybody. You know, he's the secretary. Uh, of transportation and yeah, how's that going? <laughs> and fuel costs. We have, you, yeah, all these flights getting delayed. Uh, it, it, it's it's quite laughable. And when he was the mayor of South Bend, his predecessor ran on fixing the potholes. So it goes to show that he was he was negligent and clueless when it came to transportation, even when he was this small town mayor. But I but I digress. So I'd be willing to bet they try to replace Buttigieg. The problem is, what do they do with Kamala Harris? Because because they committed to have Kamala Harris on the ticket, Biden kind of stepped into that. She's very unpopular if you look at polling uh, data. 
and 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 there there you go. They've got to do something with that. So they're in a little bit of predicament. But boom, daddy, I don't think it matters who the Democrats run, whether it's Buttigieg, Harris, whether Biden runs again, because the Republicans are going to take the White House back in 2024, and we're going to win big in 2022. The Democrats continue to talk about January 6th. Uh, they they talk about they try to bring that up all the time. Americans don't care. Americans care about the the pain, the the pump, the price of groceries, the chaos in the southern border, crime rate surging. There are very immediate problems. Republicans are working on those immediate problems. Democrats are always in the rearview mirror trying to fight the last war, and that is just that their fight against Trump. So good luck with that. We will win in 2024. The White House will win in 2022 with President Trump or another candidate. It doesn't matter. The Democrat Party is is in chaos and disarray, and we're gonna, we're going to be here to pick up the pieces. Well, all those problems you named are are not Biden's problems. I mean, we have a soundbite right here. Trey, play that soundbite. This is Joe Biden saying basically that everything that's wrong with the world right now, everything you named, Congressman, not his fault. Go ahead and roll it. The reason why gas prices are up is because of Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. The reason why the food crisis exists is because of Russia. So there you go. Yeah, I can't remember if scapegoat is one word or two, so it's good I'm I'm on radio. Uh, You know, it's quite amazing that they're using this invasion of Ukraine as the excuse for everything. But the American people are way too smart for this. Uh, We know that gas prices went up almost a dollar, actually, I think over a dollar from the time Biden was elected to the the period before Putin invaded Ukraine. Uh, So that we know that we were suffering from inflation. Uh, before that, there was a there was chaos with crime in the southern border well before anything happened overseas vis-a-vis Russia and Ukraine. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have had a different response in Ukraine. I, I wish we would have been a little bit more uh, hands on at the beginning of that we probably could have prevented the invasion. But Biden is now using the Russian invasion of Ukraine to 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 scapegoat and take the blame off himself. It's not working, though. The polling on Biden is horrible. Uh, His approval rating is like 32 percent. The American people know whose fault inflation is, whose fault the high gas prices are, and that's that's owned by the Democrats, particularly Biden. Because remember, they don't the, the silver lining with the Democrats taking the House, the Senate and the White House is that there's there's nothing to stop their craziness. So you rip this veneer off the party, there's a veneer that they're somehow like the adults in the room. And you see that, no, it's the party of AOC and Bernie Sanders and, and woke yuppies, woke millennial yuppies running around trying to bring in the Green New Deal, uh, trying to... Uh, you know, trying to acquiesce on the on the foreign stage and show show weakness, having open borders, uh, it's really exposed the Democrats for what they are, a radical far left party. What do you make? And I don't know if you've seen this because this is kind of just breaking. White House Economic Advisor Brian Deese, did you see what he had to say, Congressman? I did, I believe that I missed that. I'm sorry. Okay, he he. Well, he just said it not too long ago. He said. High gas prices are worth it for the future of a liberal world order. And I guess social media is going nuts, nuts over this. So basically, you, you, you have him and some others. I've heard some other Democrats saying, hey, look, you know, this, if we're going to go green, this is, you know, Americans just got to suck it up, you know, right now. And, and we'll get through this and the world will be better. Even Biden's in it at that. Is that tone right. deaf or what? It's incredibly tone deaf, but it doesn't surprise me that he said it. Remember, Secretary Granholm uh, had the comment about, well, if you were driving a Tesla or a Prius, you wouldn't be feeling as much pain. This party has become the let them eat Prius party, where they're totally tone deaf with the average American. They're a bunch of elitists in the ivory tower, just like Marie Antoinette was during the French Revolution. But the, the Democrats, by design, wanted gas prices to go up so they could make renewable energy uh, more affordable vis-a-vis the rising cost of hydrocarbons. That's why Biden in the debate said he w- wanted to phase out uh, fossil fuels. That's why he shut down the Keystone XL pipeline on day one. They had been saying for years, for years, that they want gas prices to be 4 or $5 a gallon to make alternative fuels uh, more economical. The, the difference is, though, is that it's the Republican. The problem is, is that their base – 
doesn't care because they're a bunch of yuppies sitting on Zoom all day. If they're leaving their house, it's to go to Pilates class or yoga. It's it's the conservative. It's a Republican that's driving to a job site. Uh, it's the waitress that has to drive to the diner to work her shift. The police officer that has to drive to the station. The truck driver. We're the ones that have to. We're the ones that have to be in the car and have to have to travel. So we're paying the price for this. Where where the urban elite and in the in the the Zoom class is at home, not feeling any of the pain. Hey, real quick before I let you go, how about California becoming the first U.S. state to guarantee free health care under the state's Medicaid program for all low-income immigrants in California who are living in the country illegally? This is going to be effective, twenty twenty-four. It's, it's quite amazing that the, the, the state that has to have rolling blackouts because their power grid is so bad that they're now giving away free free edu- uh, um, free education, free, free health care, and free health care, yeah. free health care. Um, it, it's quite amazing. They can't even they can't even turn their lights on uh, with any kind of predictability. Yet they want to give free health care out. Uh, it shows you where the priorities are, and it's why people are fleeing California. And if you think free health care sounds good, just wait till how expensive it is when it's free. Because I can tell you, anything the government runs is going to cost the U.S. economy and the U.S. taxpayer much more than the private sector ever would. Congressman, always appreciate it. Hey, I'm going to be doing a show live in September from D.C., so I expect dinner. You, I would gladly take you to dinner. You tell me where you want to go, it's on well, me. I'm well, here's, here's the problem. Carmen's going to be with me, and he eats like a damn rhino, so you might not want to foot the bill for this one. <laughs> We, we might be get, we might be going to a, to an all you can eat buffet to, to minimize my loss. <laughs> Carmen, will that will that help, Carmen? <laughs> Congressman, look at it this way: every time I bend my elbow, my mouth opens. So I'll do a buffet. I'll do upscale. Whatever you want, Congressman. All right, Congressman, thank I'm look, you. I'm looking forward to it. See you guys. All right, that is Republican Congressman Guy Reschenthaler.